As the White House contemplates sending more troops to Afghanistan, the situation in neighboring Pakistan is getting more tense. The Taliban have claimed responsibility for a massive attack on the country's army headquarters at the weekend that ended in a hostage crisis. Our teaser at Prius Trader is in our Washington studio tonight. She's got analyst uh, Ryan Selim from the New America Foundation with her. Evening to both Priya. Uh, so will this latest attack become yet another reason, do you think, for Barack Obama to send more troops to the region? Hi, Kevin. Well, I think that's something that everyone is waiting to see. And many people are also wondering how President Obama's new Nobel Peace Prize will affect his decision on whether or not to send more troops to Afghanistan. And joining me to help talk about it is Rehan Salam from the New America Foundation. Rehan, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. So first of all, I know that you support the mission in Afghanistan and you believe that the United States should send more troops over there. Why? Well, part of it is that when you look at the historical experience, the United States has a real opportunity to create a stable Afghanistan, and a stable Afghanistan will help guarantee a stable South Asia and Central Asia. And um, I know that you have compared President Obama to President Bush in the past and said that maybe both men haven't been honest with the American people about the mission over in Afghanistan. Can you explain that to me? Absolutely. The big political reason uh, why President Bush and President Obama have argued for a U.S. presence in Afghanistan is about preventing a safe haven for al Qaeda. But the truth is that that's not really the main reason we ought to be there. The main reason is to help stabilize Pakistan by seeing to it that we defeat the proxies of the Pakistan military in Afghanistan today. And oddly enough, what the United States is trying to do now closely resembles what the Soviet Union tried to do in the late 80s and early 1990s. And so what's the best way to go about this now and not kind of repeat the mistakes of the past? It's a commonplace in the U.S. to argue that the Soviets failed in Afghanistan, but the truth is actually far more complex. During the late 80s, the Soviets pursued a different strategy that stabilized Afghanistan's population that defended them from the insurgency that they were facing, which was a zealous and anti-American as the insurgency that we have today, except that it was actually backed by the CIA and by Pakistan. If we pursue a similar strategy, we might actually have more success, because unlike the Soviets, we don't face a very well-funded opposition. And so what do you think President Obama is likely to do next? And are you worried at all about his new Nobel Peace Prize and that affecting his future decision? I don't think that the Peace Prize is going to affect the decision. Rather, I think it's domestic political dynamics. Among Democrats, rank and file Democrats, there's very little support for having a surge, a military surge in Afghanistan. And among Republicans, support is actually dwindling over time. So the easiest thing for President Obama to do would be to try to save face and actually not increase the number of troops. Unfortunately, that will likely lead to higher U.S. casualties and thus increased calls for a complete withdrawal from Afghanistan over the longer uh, term. Well, it's certainly a complicated situation, and I think everyone here in the United States is waiting to see what President Obama does next. But for now, Kevin, it's back to you. Thanks for that. Appreciate it. Talking there with uh, Ryan Selim from the New America Foundations. Appreciate it.